Hello everybody, today I will show you a computer that I have got. It has an old laptop or what was called back then a lockable because it does not contain any batteries so you had to bring a power cord but it was still formed like a suitcase. The computer itself is a IBM PS2 P70 lockable computer. Its type number is 8573 slash 031. As we can see here we have the monitor. It has a floppy drive that comes out slowly, very sexy. And we have a good old quality IBM keyboard. But unfortunately if we press the on button nothing happens. So with the back of the computer peeled off, what we first can see is up here, this complete card is a 3COM token ring network card. Over here we have some peripheral connections, parallel ports, PS2 port, VGA out. Down here we have the 30 megabyte hard drive. Over here we have three RAM modules, two megabyte each, 72 pin. Down here we have the power supply unit. Here we have the motherboard. And what we can see on the open slot here is an upgrade slot for a math processor. The 386 CPU itself is located down under the network card. And it's a 16 MHz 386 processor. And the whole computer itself supports a total of 8 MB of RAM and another 8 MB in an expansion slot. The screen on the front is a red gas plasma monitor which basically means it's a very complex neon tube. It's, it comes in a resolution of six, 640 times 480 pixels in 60 grayscale. When this computer was first released in 1988, it costs about $7,695. Having removed the network card, here we can see the 6 volt backup battery, which at the moment measures 3.568 volts. So maybe it still remembers what's in the BS. The power supply unit comes out in one whole piece by only taking out three screws. Unfortunately, I am still not able to power it up while everything is disconnected from it. It is put together with rivets, so I will have to drill it up in order to take a look inside and maybe find something that is defective. So taking the power supply apart was not as easy as getting it out itself. First of all, it contains a whole variety of different kind of screws, some with safety heads. It has the metal shielding around it, a plastic cover, and inside here we can see the power supply itself. First thing to check is of course if the fuse is blown. And it is not. So we will have to look for the fault elsewhere. But just looking over the circuit there are no apparent component failures or anything else that looks just even the slightest out of place. This is now what happens. Just enjoy the lovely sounds.
So now that it has all been put back together, let's see it boot up again. So after that uh, the computer decided not to turn on after all and just had a short glimpse in the display, I took the whole thing apart again and what I did was to take some measurements on the different capacitors. First I did some measurements on the DC link capacitors just before the switch mode transformer and they showed 320 volts DC fine. When I checked the 250 volt DC supply for the plasma display it also went up fine but then went down again when the power supply shut down. It did not like, seem like it had any problems. When I checked the 15 volt or 24 volt supply what I saw was uh, a lot of oscillation and then it just suddenly stopped. Um, something looked like it could not probably rectify the output of the low voltage side from the transformer. So I pulled out four of these 800, 1800 microfarad 10 volt capacitors and as you can see they all measured around 1400 microfarad. So it actually comes down to like missing one of these capacitors in capacity. I did also locate what seemed to be a bad solder joint on the middle leg of the shot key rectifier on the low voltage side. Okay, so let's see if it wants to boot up now that I have repaired the power supply. Oh, there it goes. Mm. Okay, screen is... Oh, there. There we have the RAM check. And I expect to have 6 megabyte of RAM from the 3 sticks that we saw in the sockets. There it is. Looking for a boot disk on the floppy disk it seems. As you can see. Oh, starting MS-DOS. Seems to be in Danish. Yes, this is a Danish version of DOS. So let's see what we have on the drive. Oh, we have a Windows install installation. Oh, isn't that lovely? Windows 3.11. This uh, plasma display is actually pretty good. It's very uh, pleasant to look at. See what we have here. Let's look at the clock. Okay, so apparently this computer has been turned off for about 17 years. That's quite a while, or 16 years. Just about. Or I would think there is some kind of mistake with the year, maybe there's some year 2000 compa compa compatibility problem because the date is actually correct. Mm. Not sure if it's here, I can set the new time. That must be in some kind of Hmm, let's see, control panel. Date, 
date and time. Let's see if we can get it to today. Okay, seems to be no problem. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's like 21 right now. It did mention that my network card was not working. Because the drivers seem to be out of date or not installed, probably. Also has some classics. A little hard to make out with the colors, so at least we can always tr always trust that the hearts and spares and such is the same. Mm. Sure, how I make the stack. Oh. That was a new game over there. Ah, I have to go all the way. Seems a little. I can go the other way too. This can quickly <laughs> get a lot <laughs> to be a long night. I could sit here and play solitaire until the morning. Oh well, I guess that's about it. Seems to be just a basic installation not much else to be found as you can see I have opened almost all the folders by now so doesn't seem to contain any special programs or anything so I guess this is it for now turn off yeah now we can turn it off so I'm not saying I have been sitting here all night but real men do only play Solitaire with three cards drawn at a time. And I don't know about you, but when was the last time that you played Solitaire with only a clickety 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 keyboard? Now let's see the true performance tests of any PC. Oh, the beauty.
thank you for watching and good night.